from the CSI Today News Desk at the College of Staten Island. Welcome to the CSI Today Talks Podcast with your hosts, David Pizzuto and Terry Manns. The CSI Today Talks Podcast is your connection to the College of Staten Island with the newsmakers that make it happen. From world-renowned faculty and staff, dynamic students, and community leaders, stay connected to CSI with CSI Today Talks. And now, here is your host, Terry Mayers. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the CSI Today Talks podcast on CSIToday.com or from wherever you listen to your favorite podcast. This is Terry Mayers, co-host of CSI Today Talks, here to bring you the latest episode, Season 2, Episode 12. Today, we're talking to Debbie Key. Associate Director of Student Life Activities at CSI, as well as two involvement ambassadors, Emily Jimenez and DeAndre Williams. Before we get to Debbie, Emily, and DeAndre, we want to remind you to make sure that you subscribe to our podcast. Co-host David Pizzuto and I look to bring you new episodes often. Like this episode coming up, all of our episodes are available via our archive on Anchor.fm, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, from our website at www.csitoday.com, or from wherever you found us today. So let's get right into it. Thanks a lot for joining us, Debbie, Emily, and DeAndre. Thank you for having us today. Let's uh, pose a few questions to Debbie. First of all, why don't you tell me a little bit about yourself and your career at CSI? I'd be happy to. My connection uh, to campus activities began really as a freshman at the University of Charleston. Um, As an undergrad student, I was engaged in a variety of campus leader roles, and it was through my involvement at UC that I had the opportunity to attend a conference, the National Association for Campus Activities Conference, which is an organization I'm still involved with today. And it was at that conference that I learned about this field and discovered that I could work with students on a regular basis. Okay. So that experience led me to pursue my Master's of Science in Education um, with a focus in college personnel work at Eastern Illinois University, and it really kicked off my career in this student development work. I've been working in student activities for over 28 years, primarily working with student programming boards and other campus student organizations and clubs, mm-hmm. and I started my career at CSI in the Office of Student Life in in 2001. So I've been at the college for 23 years. Um, Started as the coordinator for student clubs and was promoted in 2008 to my current position as associate director of student life activities when I assumed the role, an additional role of advising our campus programming board, CSI CAB. My main responsibilities at CSI include overseeing the club recognition process, advising the campus activities board, and serving as site administrator to CSI Connect, our campus web-based engagement platform. Mm -hmm. And most recently, I took on supervising a student team um, of involvement ambassadors, which is what we're going to talk a lot about today. Right. Okay, thanks for that. First of all, why don't we start off, Debbie, by talking a little bit about some general information about the Involvement Center, which the ambassadors, of course, are a part of. Uh, When and how did it come about? What is it, and what does it do? So the Office of Student Life Involvement Center evolved when my office moved into uh, 1C212B in the Campus Center in 2014. The space I moved into is fairly large, and it allowed us to create a place where we could assist students in getting involved outside the classroom and also offer opportunities to support and train our student leaders on how to start and lead student groups. Okay. So the center provides training to assist our leaders in developing the skills and knowledge necessary to effectively lead and manage their student groups at the college. Okay. And what are some of the resources that the center provides students as part of its mission? As part of our mission, we offer one-on-one consultations with students seeking to get involved or to start new groups. We provide workshops and trainings on how to run effective meetings, manage their student activity fee budget, and plan student events at the college. Additionally, we provide resources on how to recruit and retain members, how to navigate CSI Connect and the Cork app. Um, We provide workshops on goal setting and a variety of other topics as requested or needed by our student leaders to be effective in their roles. 
Okay. And you mentioned events. What are some of the events that uh, the center sponsors? In addition to the workshops previously mentioned, the center plans two involvement fairs, one in the fall and one in the winter, to give CSI students the opportunity to network and engage in conversations with both student groups and campus offices that offer opportunities for involvement at the college. These fairs are held in September and February every year, and we're in the process of starting a plan our winter one now. Okay. In your opinion, how successful has the center been so far? The center has become a place where students hang out and engage in conversations with each other. We have been successful in recruiting students to seek out involvement in our student groups and programs, and it's been really effective in inspiring students to start their own student groups. Okay. What does the future hold for the center? Currently, our goal at the center is to increase the number of student groups at CSI. The pandemic really hit our clubs hard. We saw about a 50% decrease in student clubs over the course of the pandemic. And we're getting to see a reemergence of some of our pre-existing groups, as well as interest in creation of new groups, which is exciting. Mm -hmm. Um, But our goal right now is really to re-engage this community and try and educate students on the possibilities for them to start their own groups. You know, we know that students who get involved do much better in college, um, and it also supports retention efforts, and that students who feel a connection to our community are more likely to re-enroll and continue through degree completion. So the future for the center really is focused on finding ways to engage students in as many aspects of college life as possible so that they will continue and complete their degrees at CSI. The Involvement Ambassador Program was created to support these efforts and give that kind of student-to-student mentorship and um, support. Okay. Which leads us into uh, the next section, talking a little bit about the Involvement Ambassadors themselves. In general, what is the purpose of Involvement Ambassadors? The Involvement Ambassador Program Um, seeks to find experienced undergrad, graduate students who will serve as a resource to our CSI students and our current student groups, helping to teach the benefits and offer information about the opportunities available for involvement at the college. Okay, Debbie, who can be an involvement ambassador? Could you list the qualifications, please? The qualifications we're looking for is someone who's enrolled as a student at CSI with at least six credits, Mm -hmm. um, has a minimum 2.5 cumulative GPA, 3.0 for graduate students. Our IAs are required to attend a mandatory training that helps them learn the role um, and explore all of the opportunities available for students at CSI. They have to serve office hours at least two hours per week, um, although most of them are serving four hours currently. Attend scheduled staff meetings. They facilitate approximately three to five group presentations per semester. They need to be available for both the fall and winter involvement fair. They really plan that initiative for the campus. And they need to be available for tabling. We do a lot of outreach events, so tabling in various buildings um, at open houses and undergraduate admissions events so that students can learn about the opportunities that exist. Okay. And at any given time, how many ambassadors are there? We traditionally like to hire at least five leaders per year. When we're looking, one of the things that we're looking for is to make sure that the students that we hire represent the students at the college. So both in area of study, areas of interest, Um, We try and really recruit a diverse body of students so that when a student comes in and expresses interest, they can talk to someone who's walking a similar path. All right, Debbie, another question for you. What are some of the specifics of their responsibilities? So our involvement ambassadors, one of their main roles is to schedule and conduct one-on-one consultations with students who are interested in learning how to get involved. Um, group presentations and trainings with our students and student leaders who want to learn more about the benefits of involvement, and specifically for our student leaders, how to navigate those leader roles. Um, If they're struggling with running meetings, how to do that. If they're struggling with the process for planning events, walking them through those steps and helping them navigate that. 
and also just sharing in general the resources that are available, not only for getting involved, but we have a lot of students who come in the office who are struggling with navigating various aspects of college life. And since these are fellow student leaders, they can help answer those questions. So we're looking for students specifically who can, and who know a little bit about a lot of things about the campus to engage students and help them learn how to navigate our campus. Okay. Um, they develop and facilitate CSI Connect tutorials and workshops. That's that web-based engagement platform. So our involvement ambassadors help with that process and teaching students how to just use the system to find groups to learn about events happening on campus. They facilitate our benefits of involvement and start a group workshop. They assist with the coordination, as I said, of the fall and winter involvement fair. Um, they support some outreach initiatives to discuss the importance of involvement when faculty ask for students to come in or for us in the Office of Student Life to come in to talk about our area. We usually like to send out an involvement ambassador with us so they hear a student perspective. Good. And um, they assist with our some budgetary matters um, for the student activity fee. Most of our budget matters for the student activity fee are a little complicated. So again, having that peer-to-peer -peer assistance from our students is helpful. Okay. And a very important question, if I were a student looking to get into this program, is this a paid position? It is a paid position. We are fortunate that the Student Government Club Commission um, has allocated funding for us to pay these students. They get $15 per hour, up to five hours a week, to fulfill this role. And that is funded through student student activity fee money. So we thank the entire student body for the support <laughs> of this program. <laughs> All right. Let's shift to Emily and DeAndre, who are ambassadors. Uh, let's start with Emily. Could you please tell me a little bit about your time at CSI so far, your year in school, your major, and any other extracurricular activities? Sure. So I'm a junior in the Verrazano Honors Program studying business management. Mm -hmm. And I transferred to CSI in 2020. In addition to being an involvement ambassador, I'm involved with student government as a senator and a commissioner, and also with the Campus Activities Board as a student government representative. I also started a club on campus called Active Minds. When I'm not on campus, I work as a direct support professional, which is a caretaker for individuals with disabilities. Okay. And what led you to become an involvement ambassador, and how long have you been a part of this? This is my second year as an involvement ambassador, and I applied because I wanted to help other students see the benefits of getting involved on campus. Before I transferred to CSI, I lived in the dorms at a school in Manhattan. I struggled to adjust to living there. I had a lot of trouble making friends. I had trouble getting involved on campus because I didn't find the sense of community that I was looking for. Okay. Uh, when I transferred to CSI, I was determined to have a better experience. So getting involved on campus has definitely helped me find that sense of community that I wish existed in Manhattan. I look forward to coming to school each day, and I think it's really helpful to students who are interested in getting involved to talk to others who have also been in their shoes. All right. And what are some of the things that you've done in this program that you think have had a major impact on CSI students? As an involvement ambassador, I've had many opportunities to connect with other students, and it's really amazing to see how they flourish when they get involved. I've talked to many students who are interested in starting clubs and publications, and even some who just want to know more about the events happening on campus. It's also helped me to see different ways in which I can become more involved, such as nominating myself for student government or starting my own club. Another question for you, Emily. Uh, what are some of the specific activities you've participated in as an involvement ambassador? So one thing that we've done and that I've done a lot is we've done a lot of tabling around campus, just talking to students um, about ways to get involved on campus. Mm -hmm. I've also helped students download the Quark app or look on CSI Connect for events they can go to and things they can get involved in, such as clubs and organizations. Some other things we've worked on are some social media campaigns and getting involved, and DeAndre works a lot on that as well. I was going to say, if I can interject, Emily, you were very helpful in forming a number of clubs, both the American um, Lung Cancer Screening Initiative, Active Minds, the club you started, and more recently you worked with um, a group of students forming a engineering club, correct? Yes, true. Okay. And now I'd like, Emily, for you to uh, see if you can recall two or three examples of how you have helped a student with a problem, someone who's come to you and, you know, talk a little bit about what that issue was and then how you resolved that issue. 
one that happened recently was I was talking to a student about starting a publication. Uh, the student was very interested in starting a publication on campus, but didn't really have a solidified idea of what they wanted this publication to be. So I really just sat down with them and discussed what they were looking for in starting a publication. Like, why do you want to start a publication? And what do you want to put in it? And then we kind of just discussed what the idea could become. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think this conversation was helpful to the student, but it was also helpful to me to see like what the benefits are of being an involvement ambassador in that I was able to help this student solidify an idea and feel ex excited about starting this publication outside of what he was already thinking. Okay. Another example? Yeah. So um, there was also a group of students who are looking to start an engineering club, as Debbie mentioned. Um, and I met with them basically as a small group to talk about the process of starting a club and also about any questions they might have or anything like that. And I think it really helped with their confusion regarding starting a club uh -huh. um, and any questions that they had, I was able to answer. And I think it made them feel a lot more comfortable with the process. Okay. And what do you like most about being an ambassador? My favorite part of being an involvement ambassador is talking to other people. I really like seeing students' eyes light up when they talk about their ideas and their interests, and it's exciting to see how these ideas and interests grow and come to life. And what's the most challenging part for you? The most challenging thing about being an involvement ambassador is that although we can encourage students to become more involved, we can't always be successful in our goals. Sometimes people are resistant to trying new things, which makes it difficult to bring about that motivation and excitement that we seek. My hope is that all of our student organizations can work together to bring about school spirit and make our sense of community stronger. Okay. How have your leadership skills been affected by this experience? As I mentioned earlier, being an involvement ambassador has not only allowed me to help other students, but it has also helped me get involved myself. Uh, I nominated myself for student government, I started my own club, and I do attribute all this to the fact that I was an involvement ambassador, learning about all the things that are available on campus. So through all of these uh, different initiatives and different opportunities that I've taken advantage of, I've become a stronger leader, a better communicator, and I've made friends, which has helped me become more confident. Okay. And would you recommend this program to other students? And if so, why? I highly recommend the Involvement Ambassador Program to anyone who wants to help students engage in what our campus has to offer. Uh, I recommend it because being an involvement ambassador has shown me the benefits of getting involved and, as I said earlier, helped me to make friends and become more well-rounded. Okay. And what does the future hold for you after CSI? So I'm not 100% sure of what I want to do after I graduate. However, studying business management and being an involvement ambassador have introduced me to many potential career paths, and I feel well-prepared for whichever of those I choose to pursue. All right. Okay, DeAndre, let's turn to you now. Tell me a little bit about your time at CSI so far. Well, um, I'm a recent graduate of CSI. I graduated with honors in psychology with a double minor in sociology, anthropology, and disability studies. I am now in graduate school at CSI studying mental health counseling. With my time at CSI, I've been a part of clubs and organizations such as Project REACH, the Black Women's Initiative Club, Campus Activities Board, and Black Student Union, and also the Involvement Ambassadors. Okay. And what led you to become an involvement ambassador? And how long were you a part of it? What led me to become an IA was my passion to help people. I love seeing people involved, engaged, and enjoying extracurricular activities. I truly love seeing people at their best, so I believe getting involved is when their performance is at their best. Also, this is my second happiest year as an involvement ambassador, and I don't regret getting back into the program as well. Okay. And what are some of the things that you've done in the program that you think had a major impact on CSI students? I feel like I definitely expressed to a lot of students that college at CSI is not only about homework and classes. It's about experiencing something different. It's about actually engaging in the college experience and surrounding yourself around students and staff who want to see you thrive outside of your curricular, you know, schoolwork. Okay. Let's uh, talk a little bit about your specific activities while you were in the program. Well, in the program, I've helped students also download the Quirk app and check out CSI Connect um, at events, like CAB events. Uh, I've helped students, like, check in. I also help in the involvement fair, make sure students get set up at their tables. 
uh, I check out, like, you know, every now and then I check out clubs and see how they're doing and try to make sure everything is running as soon as possible and that every student feels represented and respected in their clubs. Okay. And as I asked Emily, what are some of the one-on-one experiences you've had in helping students? One of the experiences that I most remember is when a student felt like they weren't being, you know, represented in one of the clubs or during like club elections, I went over to the club meeting and I just, you know, spoke to the student leader of that club and tried to see like what are the insights of this issue and why is the student still not represented. And before I just took one side of the student, what they said, I actually needed to hear both sides and see what was going on. And when I got to the bottom of the issue, I realized that there was just a lot of miscommunication between both the student and the student leader. And I asked them if they could work something out. And they didn't know me before, but I, you know, told them that I'm an involvement ambassador and I'm just here to check out the meeting and just to talk to you to see what the issue is. And at the end, the issue was resolved. Okay. And do you have another example? I guess the most recent example was a student came into the involvement center and they were interested in joining a club. I believe they said they either wanted to start a club or join a club. They came inside and I gave them a few um, resources and told them to, you know, go and see if I connect and court to see when, oh, the club they wanted to join was JVCC and they was concerned about when the clubs were meeting and they didn't know what time or what building the clubs were meeting. And I told them on the court app and I'll see if I connect, they can check to see when the clubs are meeting. And then I also gave them the list of resources to possibly starting the singing club. And I told them that they need to get at least 10 students that are interested in the same program, well, the same club, mm-hmm. and the rest of the resources necessary. What did you like most about being an ambassador? I like being able to be myself with a purpose. Being an involvement ambassador aligns with one of my values that has a life which is people. And I get to help them as much as I can as an involvement ambassador. I get to advocate for them when they are unable to advocate for themselves. And they get the support they need. Okay. And what was the most challenging part for you? The most challenging part as an IA is trying to figure out new ways to make the Cork app and see if that connect more interesting to students. Students usually don't want to download the app or check out see if that connect for events on campus or to check out the clubs and organizations because it's not something that's interesting to them. And another challenge is trying to get students to do more when they rather do less. They don't realize that every opportunity they don't take is a chance they miss to be a better them. Okay. And how have your leadership skills been affected by this experience? I believe that my leadership skills have skyrocketed. I am now able to easily approach students and try to get them involved. And no matter how much they might not be interested, they at least end up considering it in the end. I have also become more self-aware about the things I say and do as an involved ambassador because people look up to us as role models on campus. So it's very important for us to make sure we're self-aware about the things that we do. All right. Would you recommend this program to other students? And if so, why? Yes, I would definitely recommend this program to other students. Um, the students who are quiet in the beginning end up finding their voice and becoming a face representative for many of the students. Um, students feel confident in their involvement ambassadors and know that they can come to us for support with anything, regardless whether it's, you know, whether it's inside or outside of clubs and organizations and so forth. For students that are already outgoing, it gives them an opportunity to hone their leadership skills, create a family, and learn humility. Okay. And finally, now that you've graduated from CSI, what's the future hold for you? I hope after CSI I'm able to guide others and teach them good leadership skills because even after mastering leadership skills, you won't ever fully be a master. And I hope, you know, the skills I've learned as an IEA will also help me in my graduate program. Okay. Now let me open the floor to all three of you, whoever wants to take this question. Uh, If a student has a problem, what are the best ways of getting in touch with an involvement ambassador? The involvement ambassadors do office hours weekly. We usually have an ambassador in the office at least for a two-hour block um, each day of the week. So the best way is 
to certainly stop by the Involvement Center, which is in the Campus Center, room 1C, 212B. They can also certainly email or reach out on social media, since so many of our student groups do, um, our students in general are on social media. And DeAndre, what is our social media handles? Can you share those? Our Instagram is CSI.involvement, and most students, for me personally, they feel comfortable coming to me and speaking to me and telling me what their issue is, or they'd rather um, text me on the Instagram, and I respond and, you know, give them as, as much assistance as possible, and they can also feel free to email me. Okay. One final question for you, Debbie. If I were a student interested in becoming an involvement ambassador, how would I go about doing that? So we post applications um, every March and usually keep the application process open through April. Mm -hmm. Students who apply then go through an interview process with a committee of mostly our student life team members and the student government club commissioner who um, supports and helps fund the, the program. And usually in the summer is when we select our ambassadors, and then we hold training in August for them to start their roles with the start of the academic year. Okay. Well, Debbie, DeAndre, and Emily, thank you so much for joining me today and letting us know a little bit about the, the Involvement Center and the Involvement Ambassadors Program. Thank you so much for having well, us, thank Terry. You. Thank you. Thanks again for listening. Coming up next week, David Pizzullo rejoins the show with another exclusive interview on CSI Today Talks. Check us out, as well as all the newsmakers at CSI, on www.csitoday.com, and be sure to subscribe. We'll see you next week, right here on CSI Today Talks. Thank you for listening to this edition of the CSI Today Talks podcast. Be sure to subscribe to this podcast to get alerted for brand new episodes and to listen on demand to your favorites. Be sure to check us out at www.csitoday.com or wherever you listen to your favorite podcast.